It's Create Day, my friends. I've got some fun and easy DIYs for you today, including a faux leather technique that you are not going to want to miss. Welcome to my channel. Grab those fabric scraps and cheap foam pumpkins and let's get started. I'm starting with this terracotta pot that had been painted pink. This was um, you know, a store-bought item. It had a pretty little floral in it, but we've had it for many years. It was very outdated and dusty. So I am just scraping out all of that moss that was covering the styrofoam there and getting this little pot cleaned up really well. I'm using the color French linen to paint the entire pot and it will end up taking me three coats of this to get complete coverage. I'm using the color Woodsy Smoke to add some shading on the bottom of that rim around the pot. So I'm, it's kind of like a dry brush technique. I am wiping off a lot of that paint so that I can just lightly brush this on there and just get like a shadow on the um, bottom part of that rim. I'm using dark brown to make some splatters onto my pot. I'm going to water this down and then use my fan brush to just tap, tap, tap over the pot and get those nice little droplets on there. Then I repeated the same process with Dixie Belle's buttercream. Once that was dry, I am going to apply a stamp on here. I'm using Stays on Ink in the color Timber Brown, and this is one of the IOD crockery stamps. I get that all inked up, center it the best I can, and I hold with one hand while I press down with the other, and then I can hold down with that hand and then press down on the other side to get a good impression onto my pot. So now I'm working on the pumpkins that are going to go in this little topiary and I've already painted them just with the paint and here I'm mixing in the baking soda with the paint. So this is the color terracotta, it's Dixie Belle and I've done um, I think a couple of coats of just just the paint by itself and now I've mixed it with some baking soda and I'm going to just pounce that all over to give it some texture. I did this with all three pumpkins. There's three different sizes. The smallest pumpkin on top is the color Sage from Folk Arts Chalk Paint, and the middle pumpkin is Buttercream from Dixie Bell. I'm using Dixie Bell's Van Dyke Brown Glaze to do some shading in between those little pumpkin sections. I will brush this on and then wipe back the excess. I repeat that same process on the other two pumpkins. Now I'm using Jolie's Finishing Wax uh, Clear Top Coat to finish off my little pot. I'm just going to brush this on over the entire pot and then wipe off the excess. I'm using that same clear wax to seal all three of my pumpkins. I will be leaving links below in the description box for all the products that I can find the links for and I will also try to leave a list of all the products I use today. So now we're ready to add some Spanish moss to the base of this. I'm using my big glue gun here. This is a big job. So it calls for a big glue gun, and I'm going to go ahead and add um, 
quite a bit of moss to this project. If you don't like Spanish moss, you're not gonna, you're probably not gonna like this one. Um, I'm, I don't know, I, I might have gone a little overboard, but um, anyway, now I'm just using some pieces of lamb's ear to fill in around the top of that base. And then these are little pieces. I don't know what it is. It looks kind of like wheat, but it's just one of the picks um, that I had in my stash. So I'm just going to add those in here and there and try to fill that up a little bit um, before I apply the topiary and then finish adding to it. So I decided to go ahead and get that in there. I drilled holes through those three pumpkins to put that dowel rod in there. And I hadn't glued the pumpkins on yet because I'm going to do that as I fill this in. So as you can see, I'm adding more Spanish moss over the top of that. So the dowel rod is glued into place and now I'm gluing in that bottom pumpkin. And then I can finish filling in all around this with just little pieces from different picks and stuff that I have and just doing whatever I have, working with what I have, um, trying to make it look appealing to me. So, you know, you just do whatever works for you. It's time to start on the top of this pumpkin, and of course I'm starting with that Spanish moss. I add in three of the lamb's ear, I do two of the kind of medium size, and then I put a third one on there that's smaller. But when I put the pumpkin down on top of this, I didn't like the way it looked, so I ended up um, taking off that little third one that I glued on there. I'm using another piece of that dowel rod to wrap this covered wire around so that I can make the little pumpkin tendrils. I just make one long piece and then I pull it apart in the middle so that I can wrap it around the dowel rod. And then I can hot glue that into place. Now I add some more hot glue and place down the middle pumpkin onto the top of all that and just press down and hold it till it's set. And then I can go right ahead and start working on the top of that one, again with that Spanish moss and some lamb's ear. Then I do the tendrils again, only this time I use a paintbrush so they're a little bit smaller. Then it's time to add the third and final pumpkin on top of that, and then I can decorate the top of that pumpkin. I make the hole in the top just a little bit bigger so that it can accommodate a little piece of stick that I wanted to use for the stem. So now, of course, I had to add more Spanish moss. I'm doing some more lamb's ear, another set of tendrils, and then I will go in with just some little floral picks to dress up the very top of this topiary. I'm using archival ink in the color Pebble Beach with my little sponge applicator to go around the edges of this little paper flower that I want to put right on the front of that top pumpkin. Once that was glued in place, I just took my scissors and trimmed up the Spanish moss so it didn't look like a total hairy monster here. And then this little topiary is finished. Here's how it turned out. My next four projects are going to be little no-sew mini pillows and I just grabbed out of my hoard of fabric scraps the pieces that I thought had kind of a fall look to them. I did not go out and buy any fabric for this at all. I wanted to use what I already had on hand. 
I cut everything into little four inch squares and on this one with the ticking fabric I'm going to use this horse stamp. I tried it on the uh, fabric itself and I didn't get a very clear image so I'm going to use the bakery paper and using my stays on ink and timber brown I'm going to stamp it onto the bakery paper and then I will decoupage that on to the front of the pillow. So I want to tear this out <clears throat> so that it has a nice natural edge to it and I like to use my little water pen to help me with that. Uh, you can also use a paintbrush dipped in water or you can just use your fingers. I think that stamp set was from Amazon. If I can find the link I'll leave it below. So now what I'm going to do is use my cottage white chalk paint to paint the area where I'm going to be decoupaging this on and I want it to come out kind of halo around this as well. I want this to look very, um, I want to say natural, but I'm thinking I don't want it to look manufactured. I don't want it to be like the perfect shape of that horse. I want it to just kind of look like it mimics the shape, but it goes out beyond the actual image itself. And once that paint was dry, I went ahead and applied my matte Mod Podge. And then I can put my little piece of bakery paper on there. And then I go around the edges with the Mod Podge and kind of let that set up before I paint over the entire image to seal it. Now, these are no so so I'm going to be using hot glue to put my little pillows together. But this is just to give you some ideas. These would be really cute. If you're a sewer and you did stitches around things, they would just look so much cuter than what I did here today. I'm just trying to spark some inspiration for different ways to like maybe decorate the fronts of the pillows. Um, you know, these aren't all that great, but um, they're very simple and anybody can do this. So now I'm going to hot glue everything together except a section there on the bottom. And then I can go ahead and stuff that with my polyfill. Once I had that stuffed, I just closed that seam up with a little bit of hot glue. And now I'm using that Timber Brown Stays on Ink with my little applicator to just lightly go around those edges and add a little bit of distressing and age to it. And here's how that one turned out. Now for this pillow, I wanted to make a little pocket on the front. So I chose this fabric and out of some, I think it's a muslin fabric, I'm going to fold this, I cut it a little square, I'm going to fold the top down, then fold those edges in to make a nice little hem. So with my hot glue, I'm doing the top part that will be folded down facing outward. And then the rest of it, I'm going to glue down facing inward. So here's how that looks and how I'm going to place it onto the uh, front of my little pillow. I have these stamps I got, I believe, from Michaels. They are very small words. Oh my gosh. Um, they're not really easy to work with. I'm just going to tell you that. With Stays on Ink and Timber Brown, I am stamping up Fall is my favorite. And this one, this one worked out okay. I, it attached to my little thin mount just fine, and I was able to press that down and get a pretty good image. But on the next one I tried to use, not so much. I had a lot of trouble with it. So you can see, you can see through that middle section where it's just the one layer of fabric. So I'm going to put this other little piece that I cut out to fit in there so that you won't be able to see the um, anything behind it. I want it to all look, you know, the same. 
So just, I'm gonna glue that on there with my Fabri-Tac glue. So now with my little pocket in place, I can glue this together and then stuff it and glue the seam together just like the other pillow. Here's where I have these little floral picks that I want to insert into that pocket. So I'm just going to put some hot glue down in there, push them in, and this little pillow is done. Okay, for my next pillow, I could not resist doing a candy corn pillow. I am going to be painting this the colors of the candy corn. So I'm starting with Dixie Belle's buttermilk. Or no, butter, <laughs> buttercream. <laughs> eh, what's the difference? It's a white. So I'm going to paint that on the top part on both halves. And then I will come in with Dixie Belle's terracotta. And I'm going to paint this on the middle section, but I do want to get that little ombre effect. So once I have um, most of this painted, I don't want that to be completely dry yet. I'm going to come back in with that paint that I used with the buttercream paint. It's been sitting in water, so I'm just going to dab off the excess water, and now I'm going to run that over that little line between the uh, terracotta and the buttercream and it kind of gives it a little ombre effect. So then I can finish painting up this middle section and then I come in with butter for my yellow and I will do the same thing with that. I'm gonna start painting that bottom section and then I will come in with the terracotta paintbrush that's still wet and do the ombre onto that yellow. I repeat the same process on the other half and then we are ready to glue this together. Now personally I'm not a fan of candy corn. Ugh, I don't like it. But the pillows that people make looking like these are so cute. They do the little stitching marks across the different, you know, where the colors come together and stuff. It's just, I couldn't resist just doing a simple version of this. Now I'm going to use my Distress Oxide ink in Vintage Photo and just go around the edges of my little candy corn. For a little finishing touch, I'm going to stamp an image, just this little like fern from this stamp. I think I got these off of Amazon onto a little piece of drop cloth. I'm going to use Stays on Ink and Timber Brown. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to stamp that on there and then I can go around the edges with the uh, vintage photo. Or do I use? Nope, I use the Stays on Ink for that too. Go around the edges and then I can just glue that onto the front with some Fabri Tac glue. And here's how this little guy turned out. For my last mini pillow, I'm using this pretty little floral fabric, doing the same four by four. And this one goes awry, but I try to fix it. And you'll have to let me know what you think of my fixed job. So I cut out a piece of that drop cloth again. I wanted to stamp on I think it was Grateful and Blessed from that same little um, stamp set with the tiny words. <laughs> and that one was just not going to stick to that thin mat. I cleaned it off really well. I tried several times and it just kept falling off. 
and eventually I um, just did it by hand and then it didn't turn out well so here I'm trying like try it on the paper towel nope it falls off again so then uh, I finally gave up I cleaned this thin mount off again and decided to go with um, some different wording I chose give thanks and I put them on my acrylic uh, mount hoping that I would get a better result with that but these I'm, I'm telling you these things they're so tiny it was really hard to get these to mount on and get them straight um, you know unless you have really young eyes and hands I don't recommend but it turned out for that one now it says give thanks and I thought I would layer this with this other piece of brown fabric but then I thought, oh, I need to distress the edges with my Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. But all that did was make it look dirty. I went ahead and glued it on, even though I wasn't feeling really good about how it looked. I thought, well, maybe I'll like it better once it's all put together. So I glued that on there, and then I attached that to the front of the pillow. And I didn't like it. <laughs> Um, but I thought I could fix it. So once I got that glued on there, I decided to do a border around the drop cloth with some jute string or jute twine. And it just went from bad to worse. I hated it. I absolutely hated it, but I didn't want to scrap it completely. I thought I can fix this. See, there it is. I just, it's just, uh. So, in comes the paper flower that's big enough to cover all that up. These are little mini mums that I got from Hobby Lobby. And, of course, now more of the Spanish moss. <laughs> you know. I don't know. I guess that's my thing with this video. Um, I, I wanted to cover as much of that up as I could to disguise what the flower wouldn't wouldn't cover so now I'm going to glue that little flower on there and then to try and make this look like it was something a little more creative I chose some wording out of the Tim Holtz clippings sticker book that I got at Hobby Lobby I chose the phrase withered leaves about your feet cut it in half and then I'm going around it with my stays on ink to give it a little distressed look so now I just need to figure out where I want to position these on here I kind of play with them move them around a little bit and then before I glue I stick in my little transfer sticks because this top piece of fabric is already glued down to the other piece I did that even though I didn't like how it was turning out for some reason. So I wanted to make sure that glue didn't go all the way down through to the other layer of fabric. So I get these glued on there and then we can stuff it and finish off the open seam. So you'll have to let me know, did I save it or is it still a hot mess? On to the next project. I have this wooden bowl that I thrifted. It's got some damage to it. There's a hole right there that I'm going to have to fill in with some Durham's water putty. And once I get that done, I will go ahead and sand this down and get it all cleaned up. I just mix, uh, you know, just a little bit of the Durham's water putty with a little bit of water to get the consistency I need to fill that hole and then I let it dry. I'm painting the entire bowl with Dixie Belle's chalk mineral paint in the color buttercream. I believe it took me three coats to get total coverage. Mm -hmm. 
This is a napkin that I picked up off of Amazon. I love that little blue truck. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the second ply. There was only two plies to this. So that I'm only working with the top ply. And I want to decoupage this down into the center of my bowl. But I don't really want all that background that's on there. So I'm going to cut this out so it's a more workable size. And then I'm actually going to fussy cut around the truck and some of those the pumpkins and the sunflowers so I'm doing a rough cut here with my uh, regular size scissors and then I will go in with these little tiny ones to do the actual fussy cutting around all of these little pieces it did take um, some time and some patience and the only problem was as you got further along and you had less solid napkin to work with it became really flimsy and more difficult to do, but it's not impossible. And, you know, I, I think in the end it turned out okay. So now with that all cut out, I'm going to position it into the center of my bowl and start applying my Mod Podge. I am starting at one end, working in a very small section here to get it started and then I can smooth that down and then flip up the rest of it and start decoupaging it in you know fairly small sections there's a lot of little bits and pieces that hang over and it's um, you know you gotta try and get that down where all those little parts are so it just it takes a little eff extra effort Once I had that all down, I went around the edges with a little bit of Mod Podge just to seal them. I let that set up for a little bit before going over the entire piece with a coat of Mod Podge. Next, I grabbed my sanding block with some fine grit sandpaper and I am going to distress the edges on the outside and the inside of the bowl. And then I'm also going to go around my Mod Podge piece of napkin with some fine grit sandpaper as well to rough that up and make it look a little more worn and aged. After I sanded that down and wiped it off, I did give it a coat of my Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Sealer. Now I'm using IOD's Rural Scene Stamps. I've got these little uh, landscape type stamps here that they represent like a hillside I'm going to use them as dirt that this little truck would be driving through. So I'm using Archival Ink Pebble Beach. I'm going to ink up that first larger stamp and put that one down there kind of right in the center. Then I use a smaller one to go above that. And then I take that same smaller stamp and I tape off the ends so that I can use just the middle portion of that stamp to go on the right hand side up kind of next to the wheel of the truck and then another one a little further down. I really like the difference that this made. It's just such a simple thing doing these little stamps and it just brought the whole scene together. The last thing I do is give this two good coats of my polycrylic over the entire bowl. I want to really seal in that decoupage paper since I had roughed it up so much with the sandpaper. Even um, with a coat of the Rust-Oleum Clear over it, that was not enough protection for this because I had sanded most of that Mod Podge off. 
So I did two nice coats onto this entire bowl, and here's how it turned out. So now we're on to some mini pumpkin makeovers. I have this brown and white fabric that I'm going to just snip it at the end and then tear a strip. I want to see if this is the right width for my pumpkin. Once I determine the width I need, because um, I want it to go like into the ridges of the pumpkin and also be able to cover the raised areas, I remove the stem and then I can take my strips and start cutting them to fit. I'm going to glue them from the top center down to the bottom center, but I don't want to keep covering that entire bottom and overlapping. It would build up too much. And it just happened to work out that the length I needed was exactly one-fourth of each strip that I had ripped. So all I had to do was cut them in half and in half again and then I snip down those ends into like little points so the fabric wouldn't build up too much on the top or the bottom. And so here what I'm going to do is just take these and fold them in half, cut them, fold them in half and cut them again and then snip each end um, into a point. With all my pieces cut, I'm ready to start applying these with my Fabri-Tac glue. I'm going to go down into the little intersections of the pumpkin first and cover those. So I will be skipping the raised sections of the pumpkin at first. I'm just going to go into all the recessed areas, cover those, and then I will come back and do the other raised sections of the pumpkin. And any time I had some overlap where it was going to start to build up too much fabric on the bottom, I just went ahead and snipped that off. I'm trying to keep that, um, you know, from just having too much bulk down there. So now I'm applying the strips onto the outer edges there. And so we're going to fill this whole thing in. And then we can start attaching some of our embellishments. So I'm trying to figure out which kind of twine I would like to wrap around into this, the ridges of this pumpkin. This is a jute twine. Wasn't really thrilled with that. This is an ivory one, but to me it was just kind of too stark. And then I had some brown yarn, which I didn't care for, didn't stand out enough. But this bakery twine I got from Dollar Tree to me, it looked like stitching because it's got the two colors on there. And I really like that. It just caught my eye. So that's the one I'm going to go with. So I cut that into strips that would fit from the top down to the bottom. Again, I'm not going to wrap this around and around and around and um, cause the bottom to become too bulky with that twine. So I'm doing it this way to where it just comes down to the bottom and then in that middle section where all those little strings are going to come together I will cut out a piece of fabric to cover it to give it a neat finished edge. So now that I have all those pieces glued down, I'm taking this extra piece of fabric and I'm tracing around the lid of my little paint jar to get a nice little circle to cut out and put on the bottom of that pumpkin that will cover up all the little ends of the twine and give it a much neater finish. For the stem on this one, I'm actually going to reuse the original 
stem that came on the pumpkin. I'm unraveling all that twine that was on there and I've cut strips of um, a complementary fabric to this brown fabric that I have on the pumpkin. This is kind of a paisley print with the same colors in it and I just thought it would be a really nice addition to this. So I'm just with my hot glue wrapping this around making sure I get that top covered really well so none of that original stem shows through. I check to make sure it's going to fit the way it should and then I can hot glue that into place. With that done, now I can use some hot glue to put on some of my Spanish moss. Here we go again with the Spanish moss, you guys. Uh, I don't think I overdo it on this one though, so I think it's okay. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on there. And then I have um, these strips of this paisley fabric like I used around the stem and a strip of my drop cloth. And I'm going to just tie that around that stem and let it hang off to one side. I trim that up to get it to the right length. And then we can move on to some tendrils and some leaves to finish this off. I'm using a thin gauge wire to do my tendrils. I got this at um, Michael's. It's 22 gauge wire. I'm wrapping it around a pencil. And then I can undo the middle just a little bit to help wrap that around onto the pumpkin and glue it in place. With that in place, I go ahead and add a couple of leaves. I do add a little bit of extra Spanish moss on top of those next to the stem just so that it covers up that like seam where they're attached. Then I just trim it up, any excess Spanish moss that doesn't need to be on there, and our little pumpkin is done. The next one is an Amazon pumpkin, and I'm going to remove that stem first thing. I won't be needing that. I'm using some old book pages to cover this one. So I'm using my tear ruler that I got from Amazon. I can leave the link below in the description box. And I'm just going to tear up a couple of pages to get strips that I can glue onto this pumpkin. Now I did have to go in with these and tear off the ends of them. I could have done that first before I tore them into strips, but I wasn't thinking well enough to do that ahead of time. So. Now it's time to apply these, and I'm using my Mod Podge. Now this old book page that I'm using, it was really fragile. Um, it fought me with the Mod Podge. It did not want to adhere easily. It was very brittle. So I would say Maybe use something that's not as genuinely aged as this one was. I I didn't realize that these were as brittle as they are. So it was a little more difficult using these for this project, but it did work. It just took a little extra patience because I really had to work with that. Like it didn't readily accept the Mod Podge. I really had to kind of work it in there and give it time to let it soak in. So it did take a little extra time that I hadn't anticipated. The main thing with this is, you know, that with the pumpkin being bigger in the center, you're going to run into issues with if you just do strip after strip after strip, you're, it's going to overlap at the top and the bottom, but the center won't be covered. So you're going to have to cut shorter strips to fill in some of those gaps in the middle and then kind of piece in the top and bottom as needed. It's just something, it's difficult to explain, that, but you would just have to, you just have to do it to understand what I'm trying to say. It's really hard to explain. So once I got all that glued on there, now I've got to drill the hole for my stem. 
I've just got a stick here like I often do. And before I apply that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in my jute twine. So I'm just doing this down into the um, recessed sections of the pumpkin. I'm going to stop at the bottom and cut that off like I did on the previous pumpkin so it doesn't build up and make it wobbly. And then again, I will cover that center section with um, a piece of the book page so that it has a neat finished edge to it. Now there was this little quote in the sections that I was tearing out that I, it's in a smaller print. It was a highlighted um, quote in this story. So I wanted to use that on the front, kind of like a little, um, I don't know, like a little banner or something. But because it's so fragile, I cut out a piece of cardstock to glue onto the back of it so that I could glue this onto the front of my pumpkin and it would have some stability to it. So I glue that on there with the glue stick and then I'm, I'm going to distress this with my um, distressed ink in walnut. And then I can glue it down onto the front of my pumpkin. I hot glue my little stem in place and then I add my embellishments. And here's how this little pumpkin turned out. Next up is the faux leather technique for this little pumpkin. Okay, so the first part of what I did on this piece of packing paper, I didn't get footage of so I'm going to go ahead and show that to you now with just a smaller piece that I cut out this is just packing paper that came in you know a box with items and um, it's thinner than a grocery bag you can use a grocery bag you can use lunch bags this is kind of in between the two it's more like a lunch bag as far as thickness so you just want to get it good and crumpled up and you can do this several times till you get it as wrinkly as you'd like it to be. And then a lot of people, they, they mix glycerin with water, but nobody that I watched ever said how much, what the ratio was, the glycerin to the water. So I just decided to um, use my spray mister, get this paper wet. And then I'm just going to take this glycerin and put it in my hands, spread it around, and then spread it onto this, the paper. And this just makes it really soft. It's very pliable, almost it's more like fabric. So instead of letting it dry flat, um, even though there's still wrinkles, I wadded mine up and let it almost completely dry in a wadded up little ball. And then once it was almost dry, the center part was still a little wet. Um, then then I un, 
and wrapped it and um, let it finish drying before I go on to the next step. So now that our glycerin and water treated paper is completely dry, it's time to add some color. I'm starting with the Distress Oxide sprays. I'm going to be using Walnut Stain and Vintage Photo. I'm just going to spray one color on and then go to the next color, spray that on. And then I'm going to go back with the first color I used just to add a little more. And the next day after it had dried, it doesn't look like much. It wasn't at all what I thought it would look like until I turned it over and oh my gosh, now that is something I can work with. That's half gorgeous. It's half gorgeous. It's almost there. So now it's time to add some stays on ink. I'm using Timber Brown. And then I also use uh, Archival Inks uh, Sepia or Sepia. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. So I'm just brushing these on. It's going to hit all those high spots on that wrinkled paper. I'm going to dry that really well with my heat tool. And then here's my secret ingredient, Gel Antique Stain by Tandy Leather. This is called Saddle Tan. And I did start out using this full strength. The idea was to brush it on and then use my hand to spread it out but it was not fluid enough, so I added some water to it until I got it to the consistency that worked well for me. And then I was able to brush it on, smooth it out, and this just turns out absolutely gorgeous. This is like the secret ingredient. You have got to get some of this if you want to make the faux leather because it just, it's total game changer. So I just keep spreading this on and, um, then once that was dry, I'm able to go ahead and do a coat of Mod Podge over this to seal it all in. So now here when I'm doing the Mod Podge, it does look like it's turning colors like it looks kind of green that doesn't stay that way it doesn't dry that way so don't don't worry about that it looks kind of funky at first but it dries and it looks absolutely beautiful when it's done and this is the little pumpkin that I'm going to use for this I drilled out um, a bigger hole in the center of it so that I could fit this paper down in there I'm gonna to have to trim it up of course um, but my idea is to wrap this around and then be able to tuck uh, the excess at the top down into that center. So I'm just trying to kind of wrap this around and see how much excess I have to cut off. So I trim off the excess and then we can um, get to actually putting this down into place in the center. One of the things I would recommend that I didn't use is I would apply a spray adhesive to the pumpkin so that you can get a tighter fit. See right there how it tore because I'm trying to pull on it um, to keep it from like being too loose or puckering. I was able to fix that just by wrapping around it like there was enough paper there that I could adjust it. But it would just... I think it would adhere better and make the job easier if you applied a spray adhesive to the pumpkin to help this paper stick. Because you really do have to be careful. I mean, it's still paper that's been compromised by liquids. So it's, you know, somewhat fragile. But what I'm doing is just adding some hot glue into the center of that hole and then wrapping that paper up around it and tucking it in there to hold it into place. Now, since we had a fancy leather pumpkin here, I decided it needed a more sophisticated stem than just a stick. So I chose this cork, and I'm using my antique wax. 
I ended up watering it down a little bit so it would spread easier. But I'm just going to go ahead and paint this little cork with the antique wax. And then I'm going to hot glue that into the center of the pumpkin. I cut a couple of strips of lace and a strip of tea towel and I'm going to glue these together. I'm going to sandwich them. A little bit of hot glue on the lace, attach the tea towel, and then attach the lace on top of that. And then I can wrap that around our pumpkin. So now we have leather and lace. Any Fleetwood Mac fans out there? Leather and lace. I'm going to tie that on and then just glue it again in the center so that those ends kind of stay together off to one side and then trim up the bottom. And now I'm just going to add a couple of little leaves. These are paper leaves and I also have a paper flower that I'm going to put right in the center and that will complete this little pumpkin. Now we are on to the last pumpkin. This is our rotted pumpkin. I am going to mix up some plaster of Paris to put some heavy texture on this little foam pumpkin. I'm not sure exactly what the ratio was that I used, but it's pretty thick. I wanted to be able to stipple this on there and have it um, really stand out with some peaks and valleys in there. So I'm using a chip brush to brush it on and then pounce it and get a lot of texture on there. So this is how it looks. And then once it's dry, I'm going to go in and sand that down so that I can remove all those little sharp points and peaks. I, I don't want it to be smooth, but I don't want it to be um, sharp. So now we still have all that beautiful texture on there, but it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to do a wash now with my black acrylic paint and water. I just watered down this black acrylic paint and I'm going to brush this on here and it will go down into all the recessed areas and details and then I can just wipe it off with a baby wipe so that we just have all the the majority of the darkness is just down in the details. Something that I regretted not doing is before I started painting, I should have taken my heat gun to this and melted it down in a couple of areas to make it look more like a rotting pumpkin. Um, you want to do that in a well-ventilated area, but that's something I wish I would have done. I didn't think of it until after I'd already painted it. So now I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Terracotta. Craft Smart Spanish Olive and Deco Art Antique Gold. I'm starting off with a Spanish Olive. I am just applying this kind of sparingly around the pumpkin and then dabbing it back with a baby wipe. The layering of these colors underneath the main color helps um, give a realistic effect that it is rotting. Even though right now it looks like a zucchini squash or a cucumber or something. So now I'm going to go in with that terracotta color from Dixie Belle. I'm watering it down a little bit because I don't want to completely cover up all these colors that I've put on there. I want them to still show through somewhat. So I'm going to brush this on there. And then with a baby wipe, I'm going to wipe back any areas that I think are just a little bit too covered so that we can still expose all of the goodness underneath that terracotta color. Now I'm going in with Dixie Belle's Van Dyke Brown Glaze. I'm going to brush this over the entire pumpkin and then wipe it back. Mm -hmm. 
And now for my stem, I have another little creepy looking stick. I'm just going to drill a hole big enough to accommodate it and then hot glue it in place. I decided to make a couple of leaves out of my IOD air dry clay. I have this mold that I got off of, oh no, not Amazon. I, I think I got this at Michael's actually. And what I'm doing is um, when I go to put these on here, I'm twisting them just slightly and bending them. So they don't just, just sit flat on the pumpkin. I want them to look a little distorted because they are dying too, just like the pumpkin. So. They're going to be kind of shriveling up and looking dead. You know, it, it just fits with the pumpkin. So now I'm using my Gorilla Wood Glue to glue them into place. And then I can paint them. I'm starting off with a coat of dark brown. Now I'm going to water down some black acrylic paint to do a wash over the dark brown and then I can wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. Now I'm going to add some of that Spanish olive. I'm just going to brush some of that on and then wipe it back as well. Next up is our antique gold color. Same thing. I'm going to apply this pretty sparingly mostly around the edges and wipe that back. Next up, I'm dry brushing some honeycomb on here. I don't really get the effect I like, so I actually grab some woodsy smoke and dry brush that on as well. And no rotting pumpkin would be complete without some Dixie dirt. So I'm going to brush on some Mod Podge and then add some Dixie dirt to it. I will be shaking off the excess and then blending it back in with a little bit more of the Mod Podge. This is like the final touch for this creepy little pumpkin. The final step for this was a coat of my Select Seal Matte Sealer. You could take it outside and do spray paint, you could do wax, you could do whatever you want. I chose this because it will keep it matte, it was easy, it's inside, I didn't have to worry about the weather outside. But however you choose to seal this little guy up will work just fine. Here's how this one turned out. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today. I hope you find my content useful and will consider subscribing to my channel. But most importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.